Look. And we now know what this is. That this is a general post office lead post bag seal. Hmm, see if there's any more. So I see a couple of things here. I see this, which again is just a big piece of metal. You see the end of probably a tooth, uh, some sort of lid, some metal lid. Maybe toothpaste. Um, so I'm just collecting up. I have some plans for metal bits. I'm going to be making some more mudlarking creatures and little random metal bits are always great for those. So nothing particularly exciting, but good none the, nonetheless. These are the holy bricks we were talking about in the comments that people said that it looks like a gobby in the corner but there's lots of these holy bricks and I don't know what they would have been for, they're quite nice. I'd quite like to find a whole one, I could take it home and make it a home for bees. There was also a lot of comments about the flints that like, they, we might have missed but there's a lot, a lot of flint on this beach. I'm trying to look for the metal patch, it's only there's like a giant bit there. Here is a metal patch. See, this is a big piece of flint. But I don't think it, I think it's all accidental. But look, all these in the metal again. I don't know if that's got anything written on it. There's round things. I think that's just a fastener, the round thing. Another post office seal, lead seal. I'm not sure if this one says anything. Oh, good nail. Lovely square nail. Another post office seal. To see if that one says anything. <gasps> oh my goodness, do you see it? Oh my, I have never found anything like this. Oh, actually mum found a marble here, a German marble. It's like, it's one of those, it would be, this is from an uh, apothecary bottle and it would have been used for just letting out just the perfect amount like of um, anaesthesia or chloroform. Yeah. It's a tiny little hop, this one's clear. I found a brown one before and this time the heart is going in the opposite direction and it's so tiny. Oh my goodness. Wow. I really wasn't expecting a find like that today. <laughs> it's like an air raid. It's a kind of scary noise. Like that. Oh look, it's an E. I found an E. It's an E. The letter press an E. That's a good capital E. <gasps> no way! Isn't that crazy? <gasps> it looks like a mouse. They always so look like tiny. a mouse. It's so tiny. It's a tiny beautiful. one. Isn't it? Who would have thought it would be here? I, I found it, um, an E, another E. Oh nice, I found one, um, 
Let's see. You. I found loads. Nice. Oh, my mouth, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth. Your mouth. Oh, there's another one. Look, there's loads here. There's loads. Okay, right. Um, I need a magnet. I need a magnet. Oh my goodness! Look at it all. Oh. Uh, I think that's another seal. Hiding. Another one of those lead seals. See if that's got anything written on it. Post office seal. <laughs> Some feet. <laughs> Look at that button. That is such a beautiful button. It's got words all over it. Oh, what does that say? H. Pool and Co. Saville Row. Ooh, that's Ooh, fancy. That's a very fancy button. We can Google we can that. We'll have to do the history of yeah. Saville. It's Saville Row, not yeah, Saville. Yeah, the Saville, Saville Row. Nice. That's a beautiful button. A what button? That's a fly button, you know, like, which would have like an address and a maker on it. Oh. Really nice. <laughs> piece of pipe bowl. Pipe bowl. A piece of pipe bowl. <laughs> Smallest little piece of pipe bowl. I mean, that's. I mean, I think it's a very thin nail, but it looks like a pin. Piece of pipe bowl. Top of. Must be a washer. Something. <laughs> um. Here's a button that would have said DMG, I think. Bit of a cog. glass. It could have been a cabochon or it's just some melted piece of glass but it looks like a cabochon now so that's beautiful. Um, tiny washer. Another round thing. I thought this was a coin <laughs> but it's not. But it's got something written on it so That one of those little things that look like beads, but they're not. It is. It's not. Doesn't have go a whole way through. Oh, but it would make a good eye for a craft, though. So I shall keep it. Look, a buckle. Well, part of one. Part of a very thin buckle. Really lovely hinge. It's just got the nails still in it. Ooh, yes, okay. I think I did, yes. I'll bring your camera over. I mean, it might just say patent, but look, it's another. Um, it's another clasp, but it's really beautifully decorated and it says something. It might just say patent, but I think it might say something else. But oh, beautifully that's decorated nice. clasp. Nice. So I'm gonna stick with my little patch here. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna join you in your patch. <laughs> here is my highly decorated clasp. With a word, a couple of words. No, you see. Oh, have you just immediately found something in this new patch? No, oh. it's just that. Oh, you and your flint. 
Lots of people last time we were here said that I'd missed arrowheads and flint things and tools. And there is a lot of flint here. I mean, there's great chunks of flint, like over there. That, well, it's just practically flint everywhere. And, and now look at this, and you go, oh look, it looks like it's been a bit tooled on the edge. And it's got very big bulbous percussion. But I'm pretty sure it's just an accident. Last time we were here, I found one that is actually pointed. Look. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Last time we were here, someone suggested that the chapes we were finding were actually um, treasury tags. Oh, that's what they called. I couldn't yeah, remember. Some of them may have been treasury tags because some of them do have a hole here. But this one is definitely a lace shape. It is tapered, and it's got the little holes. This one is definitely a little aglet. It's a piece of metal that went on the end of shoelaces. Because this one would have been for shoelaces. This isn't one of the old like Tudor ones for like items of clothing. This will have been probably a World War One soldiers' army boots. Now that does look like it's shape or something. It's not. It's not square at both ends. It's very pointed and it's got a thing. I don't know what that is. See, that looks very decorative. That's. I mean, who knows what it was from but it's got like a scalloped edge. This might have writing on it, I can't tell. There's a piece of lead. It's in a lot worse condition than we usually find them, but it is a paint palette, a paint pan. It's a bit broken and blackened, but you see the writing on the back. Reeves. Is it a bead? No, it's just a, a, blue, a, blue, a blue glass ball. Oh, is that a bead? Um, I think it's a glass rod, but I might be able to make it form as a bead because it has a hole all the way through. A zip. Um, we get a lot of, we get asked quite often if we get aches and pains from doing this and uh, the answer is yes. Yes we do. We have knee pads but quite often we forget them and also it's, yeah, for the things we like to find we have to get super low to the ground which means a lot of literally just crawling along rocky surfaces. So yes, we do get aches and pains. There is my small blue glass ball, rod and a zip. A bit of spoon. In the sun. Oh. That looks like that is a buckle in. Ooh, I wonder if I'll be able to. I might wait until I get home, see if I can get it out. It's another top of a toothpaste or some. Oh, it's got words on it. Lots of people in the last film here said they look like uh, head and shoulders. Um, neck and shoulders it does. We might do a series of toothpaste dolls. But that's got lots of writing to look at at home. Split pin. <laughs> There's lots of little bits here. This is um, probably the treasury tag one, but it's got a hole in the middle. It's just so many random bits of metal. I mean, what was that? They're all 
oh amazing for craft and things but it's really interesting that there are so many bits just here Piece of pipe stem. Oh! I think I found a broken piece of typeface, but I think I got the vet the correct half, the one with the letter on it. Might be an I or J. It's exciting nail which are always great for crafts. I'm just gonna have to put my knee down on the seaweed. Oh more typeface. Oh that one's a bit mm, that one might be might be savable. Some more typeface. Um look at this piece of metal. It's like a melted it's like one of those glass blobs but it's metal. You're talking about shrapnel, Mum. Yeah. And if it's stripey, it well, I don't know. Yes, you have. <gasps> wow, that's a big green piece. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I've been lifting up seaweed. Yeah, I've been. I'm sort of taking an overview. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. It's not. Well, it's just quite cool. Look at that size. That's. <laughs> it's enormous. There's another toothpaste, another head and neck. Another good brass disc. Turn over some seaweed. Not sure if that has writing on it, and look, here's another post office. I'm going to take them all home and see where they all. Apparently, it wasn't where they were going, it was where they came from. So, see where they all came from. I don't know how they ended up here. have my eye in for the seals. <laughs> oh, what's that round thing? Oh, nothing. <laughs> That's a seal. Ooh. So that is a thing from a belt. There's lots of hidden metal under here. the mud off of it and yes it is definitely I think it's half of quite a wide belt would have been a bit that clipped in or maybe not I don't know I could be completely wrong another one Okay, that's a bit, 
That's a bit distressing. There's a there's a bead in the concretion. Can I get it out? Oh no. Oh no. I'll bring you back if I can. I got it. I think it's a bead. Yep, it's a beautiful green bead. Yay! A bead! Last time we came here we found a beautiful piece of glass. Look at that. That's beautiful. Look at that. Hmm. Is that from something? <laughs> from some illicit activities? It's glass. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it could be from something that you're not really allowed to have. <laughs> now, is this a wheel? Or, oh, look, there's a, a toothpaste neck. Gonna... <gasps> is that? Oh, I don't know. I thought that was a little hand. don't know what that is. What else is in here? Those are just a plain bag, a uh, lead seal. Oh, this looks like it could be promising. There's quite a lot in here. It's all got caught up. Okay, I'll put you down and I'll have you. Oh yeah, because there's... There's a seal, a round one. A round seal. Uh-oh, okay. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff here. I came down because I want to try and get this out. Look at, is that all shot? No. There's another one and it says something. Was it seal? Yeah. It says... M dot B... I don't know, it's like a series of letters. Oh. Wow. What's it made out of? I don't know, but it's oval. Yeah, I'm thinking like frame. <laughs> yeah? What's it? Has it got like a lump? Is it all just mud? I think it's all just mud. Let's oh. take it to the water. You can hit it with my tool if you want. Careful you don't bend it. Yeah. Now you've got mud all over your hands. just popped onto the shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell what it's made out of. I think it's metal. I like, look, it's like... It's all good, it's oval. I know. I think I'm going to... Take it. Take it. Okay. It looks like a cool frame. It does. Oh, sorry. Hello. Another toothpaste uh, top. Oh, no. oh what? Oh, what? Oh gosh. Wait, wait, wait. Two seconds. Two seconds. I have to leave the mark for. 
it might be nothing. Uh, but you, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over. I'm hoping it has a face. <laughs> oh my gosh! a pixie that is a little lucky pixie <gasps> <laughs> oh <laughs> that is a tiny lucky pixie he's, a, he's adorable his he is amazing you've never found anything like him have you no i found my little mickey mouse he's look at his pointy ear and his I smiley know. face Wow, okay, that <gasps> bring me luck, Pixie. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me, uh... Oh and he's green and it matches your jacket. <laughs> oh he is adorable. Oh he's so precious. <gasps> All over. Incredibly lucky. Um. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Is it a bead? It's a bead. <laughs> that is. That is one of the most beautiful beads. It's I've ever glass. Seen. Oh. I'm gonna carry the pixie with me everywhere. Yes. <laughs> that is the most beautiful bead. That's like um. It's like millefoil. Yeah, it's like actually, but it's glass. Oh, I was gonna have to um, look that up. That is beautiful. That is such a beautiful bead. Oh my god, I think that might be the most beautiful bead we've ever found. Look at the flowers. Wow, that really is a lucky picky. A, a lucky <laughs> picky. A lucky pixie. Would you like to hold him for a while? Yes, I would. <laughs> Going to lend Kate the pixie. the luck from the pixie over to me for a little bit. <laughs> let's go, let's go find something okay. excellent. <laughs> hey, look! <laughs> oh, geez, guys. Is it going to have anything on it? Ooh! Ow! That was my frame. Look! It's got a fancy A. Oh, I've not got that one before. I wonder what that is from. Hey, nice. That might be the tiniest blue cabazon. Okay. What is? Oh, you might want again to come and see this. Oh. <laughs> um, what is it? <gasps> careful, careful, careful. What is it? What is that? I don't know, but it's got like um, it's got like light. It's like car, like um, decorate. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, I honestly, but probably quite exciting, I imagine. But Pixie's bringing me luck. Pixie is bringing you luck. What, what's yeah, your good what, thing? The, um, well, I found this, which has got something of it. And then what do you suppose this is? Oh, I don't know. What, what's this? Is that just a cog? That's just uh, a cog. It looked like a dog coin tucked like there. What do you suppose this is? I don't know, part of a pen? I thought it was supposed to be part of a pen, yeah. What, what is this? Uh, it looks like... I don't know. It looks a bit like um, Starfleet. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I found a Starfleet you badge. A Starfleet badge. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. 
not heron, is it? It is. So, we decided that we would take your wonderful idea of making some toothpaste dolls and do some crafting. And I decided I was going to make a toothpaste doll with a cloth body, sort of pipe stem legs. Um, I started out that I was going to make a little doll that mine sort of evolved and now started a whole new, <laughs> a whole new extravagant craft. <laughs> Oh wait, where's that thing that I found? Where's that? Oh, I wish I hadn't put it all in here. Or is it downstairs? That isn't it, but that will work perfectly. I'm making a little tube of toothpaste. thinking I'm going to make a this is going to be sat on the toothpaste swing <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the plan. 
So I used the little air rifle pellets as hands, no, feet for my doll and some other random metal bits as hands. And mum's slowly evolved into a chess piece. <laughs> our first chess piece for our mudlarking chessboard, which people have suggested many times before. And we, you made a queen. I did, I've made a little queen. So my toothpaste doll um, evolved and I made her a little toothbrush swing. But she is without a head at the moment because none of our heads quite work. They're either too small or too big. So I have left her at the moment. She's a little bit morbid without her head, but she's got the wire there ready for her head to be stuck on. So she will have to wait on her swing until I find the perfect head for her. I've got to embellish my chest piece a little bit more. It was sort of, like I say, it evolved, but I think she needs more embellishment. And we also need to figure out how to distinguish the black pieces from the white pieces because she's a bit of both. <laughs> I think he may be doing silver and bronze, copper, like brownie. Oh, I, I was thinking of something on their hats, on the top of them. Mm-hmm. One, yeah. one of them having, I don't know, yeah, white pieces of sea glass on their tops or so you can see. Because when you play chess, you need to know instantly what. It might be indis- difficult, you know. Mm-hmm. But we are quite excited. I think it will take a long time yeah. for us to finish. But we have our first piece and our board ready to go. And hopefully in the future, probably quite a far in the future, we can have a game of mudlarking chess. Yeah, it's going to be difficult because we're going to make the... I mean, the, the bottom of this one is perfect. It's a perfect chess piece, yeah. And, like, all the pawns are going to have to sort of be similar. Yeah. Thinking maybe for the pawns, just making little frozen charlottes with bases. Yeah. Just little moulds of frozen charlottes with different bases, because all the pawns have to be the same mm. and smaller. But the big, the big pieces at the back will all be different. Well, the horses. Yeah. The horses will also be very similar, yeah. But well, yeah, and the rooks. Well, all of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's very exciting. So keep an eye out on our mudlarking chess board. If you see any pieces that you see us find in films that you think would be good, please let us know. Yeah, suggestions would be good because this is like the toothpaste queen because mm-hmm. <laughs> of the, the head, the neck, and the shoulders. She's got a lid, a toothpaste lid, as a ha- as, as a, a crown. crown. <laughs> well, we went back to that bit of the estuary foreshore, which is very much like the Thames, but it's a bit less muddy at the moment. Um, yeah, and we had I found some a couple of very very nice things. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's not. Lots, but there is some really lovely pieces and some pieces with really deep history. Yeah, there's a lot of history going on. Do I? Oh, I may have to ask you what your favourite find is. Oh, oh, that's quite hard. I feel like one of your finds led to the other find, though. So yeah, there's a pixie. It's got to be the pixie. It's got to be. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he looks a bit like an alien. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> He's like spocky ears. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a pixie. He's not a leprechaun. No, because he doesn't have a hat on. Well, pixies have hats on too. Not all pixies. Okay. You you found one, didn't you? Sort of. There's some that look a bit like it. Yeah. I don't know what era. 1920s again. We always seem to be in the 1920s. I'm just so happy. But he's got like a glistening coat on. Hmm. It makes me think of, um, oh, there's a word for it, isn't it? The kind of dappled stuff that looks like snow, the stuff they have on snow babies and things. And your other favourite find? <laughs> it's got to be the bead. <laughs> I mean, I have never found such a beautiful bead. Never. And there is, there's a lot of history involved in this bead. It's an Art Deco Venetian wedding cake glass from uh, beads from the 20s or 30s and it's a venturine because it has like a thread of gold that goes through it um it's made up of forget-me-nots and rosebuds they sort some of the rosebuds are broken at the bottom they've all worn away they're supposed to be raised a little bit um the way to tell that it was a true venetian bead was to look at the area around the hole um and italian lapwork beads are made one at a time 
and when they're finished the copper wire that held it is dissolved in nitric acid. Um, if there's a white residue you know that it was made on mass if there's a white residue around the hole because the releasing agent to remove the, was um, to remove it from the rod. So this is this hasn't got any white residue so this is definitely a original Venetian very well made glass bead and it is exceptionally well made because of the precise way the forget-me-nots are applied. So I mean so there's an, we found the, the bracelet that came off didn't we? We found a picture of yeah of what I thought it was a necklace. Oh necklace but yeah it's it's stunning and it is a really good example because of the precision of the forget-me-nots. Mm -hmm. It is a shame that where it's been in the water the raised rosebuds yeah. have been all been chipped off. Well, it's been in there for like a hundred years. It's mm -hmm. like the not twenties again. This is another. We're going to have a wide range of nineteen twenties beads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to make a nineteen twenty bead string by itself, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. But they did use Venetian glass beads as trade beads. I don't think this one was specifically used as a trade bead, but they did make trade beads. So yeah, it's amazing the the lucky pixie the lucky me doing. pixie brought it. Because if you look at all the rest of the stuff on that beach, I know it's crazy. <laughs> you found the two most colourful things, <laughs> three most colourful things, because you also found that one embedded in the mud. Beautiful green bead. So yeah, yours. They're the only colour across this whole board. <laughs> so my my favourite find is probably my little apothecary stopper. So the one that I found before is up here. This was the big amber one I found. And as I said in the film, the hearts go the opposite way. And this one is about half the size. This so one definitely looks more like a mouse though. It does. <laughs> more like a mouse. But yeah, so this would have um, let off significantly less. Less, a really tiny little drip. A tiny little amount. So yeah, I said in the film it was for like anesthesia, chloroform, that sort of stuff. It's for, yeah, medicine, just letting out the perfect amount. So there must have been some like precision when these were being made mm. to make sure that it was That would just be really right hard to amount. calculate. I also really like my, I called it a clasp in the film, but it's actually, well it is a sort of clasp. This says twill fit registered and this is actually off of um, ladies undergarments probably a corset or what are they called like the, the stockings that get, get, no. yeah, the stockings that get held up just stockings that's what they call okay. <laughs> <laughs> so twill fit was a company for women that could not afford the likes of Spirella and Spencer and perhaps wanted something a little more traditional, the English firm of Twillfit provided the answer. And I think it's still going today, but way greatly reduced <laughs> than what they used to do. Um, it is a corset enterprise that lasted for close to a century. They provided corsets, belts, girdles, and girdles. some waist snippers <laughs> of an almost Victorian style. So the name Twillfit is a play on words of it will fit, Twillfit, which I think is absolutely adorable and a genius name. So yeah, again, this is probably from 20s. Uh, 1900, early 1900s to the 20s, yeah, 1910, 1920. And it's just so beautifully decorated and twill fit, yeah, there were some suggestions that they focused a lot on them being beautiful opposed to being comfortable. Ah. <laughs> so that would, disc that would explain why there's such beautiful decoration even on here. But yes, I don't think the twill fit women we're, very comfortable. we're entirely comfortable, but corsets are not comfortable. I don't think girdles are either. No. I have worn a corset and it was agony. It was like a whole day I had to spend in a corset and it was not fun. They're going to wonder why you spend a whole day in a corset now. Oh, I went, I was an, um, an extra on a Victorian programme and I had the, what's it called, a, a bustle? A bustle, yeah. A bustle as well. Yes, it was. I do empathise with... Um, women of the past and the clothes they had to wear because yeah because yes they did have to sacrifice a lot for style and men further back as well mm -hmm. used to have to heels in the 
poisonous makeup, and humans have always always done that. This little button, again, has got a crazy history, really, for such a small button, but a lot of people like fly buttons. I, we don't really find them that much with the addresses on and things, so that's why I was quite excited when we found this one. It says H. Pool & Co. Savile Row. This business opened first in Brunswick Square in 1806, originally specialising in military tailoring, with particular merit at the time of the Battle of Waterloo. Their business moved to Savile Row in 1846, following the death of the founder, James Poole. Henry Poole ran the business until his death in 1876 and was succeeded by cousin Samuel Cundy, whose legacy continued for five generations to the present day owners, Angus Cundy and son Simon. So it's still there. Um, the company still holds many royal warrants of appointment and services the Lord Chamberlain's office with court dress, with their livery department even creating uniforms for the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Trafalgar. The company are also credited with the creation of the dinner suit. In 1860, Henry Poole made a short evening or smoking jacket for the Prince of Wales to wear at an informal dinner party at Sandrium. In 1886, a Mr James Potter of Tuxedo Park, New York, visited London and subsequently was invited by the Prince to spend a weekend at Sandringham House. He was also advised that he should, could have a smoking jacket made by the Prince's tailor, Henry Poole & Co. When the Potters returned to New York, Mr. Potter proudly wore his new smoking jacket at the Tuxedo Club, and fellow members soon started having copies made for themselves, which they adopted as their un informal uniform for club stag dinners. As a result, the dinner jacket became known as a tuxedo or tux in America. In 2006, the company celebrated the bicentennial with the refurbishment of their premises, and 2007 saw a reissue of a suiting material made by made famous by Winston Churchill, a Henry Poole customer who ordered his first suit a hundred years ago. Mm. The price of a <laughs> of a suit from H. Poole right now can go up to three thousand pounds. So who knows what this button came off? Maybe we should send it to them. Maybe we should because they are still and I. I only found one example of this button. I could only find one H and Paul company button on the internet, and that was a gentleman that found it in America. I think it was Civil War. Civil War. He era, said it was didn't Civil he? War era. His. So maybe we should mess it. Email. Maybe we should. H maybe Pool they'd like it. Maybe they can put it in there because it's still the shop is yeah, still, there, still there, still making. Maybe they'd let's go and see. <laughs> so yeah, just that tiny button and all of that history. Just and mad. who? had the money. I know, it's like, to... well, it's like the bead. The bead is like a really expensive bead as well. Mm -hmm. It's so sad that someone spent so much money on a suit and then they lost a button. Or the suit or was the suit thrown, thrown away. away. But yeah, so there's H. Pool and Company, Savile Row. So Savile Row is a street in Mayfair, central London, known principally for its traditional bespoke tailoring for men. The street has had a varied history that has included accommodating the headquarters of the Royal Geographical Society at one Savile Row, where significant British explorations to Africa and the South Pole were planned, and more recently the Apple Office of the Beatles at three Savile Row, where the band's final live performance was held on the roof of the building. Hmm. So yes, it's a very expensive, fancy road where they make... Tailors. Just tailors, tailors yeah. yeah. Here it says... Taylors started doing business in the area in the late 18th century, first in Cork Street, about 1790, then by 1803 in Savile Row itself. In 1846, Henry Poole, later credited as the creator of the dinner jacket, opened an entrance to Savile Row from his own tailoring premises in Old Burlington Street. Hmm. The term bespoke, as applied to fine tailoring, is understood to have originated in Savile Row and came to mean a suit cut and made by hand. Ah, um, this was... An odd object that the pixie led me to. Kate seems to think it's like a like a clip that goes into a bag, maybe or something. I don't mm, know. Like the leather, like the leather or the cloth would have been attached to this, and then you sort of like. I know you. I know the ways you mean, but yeah, I, that doesn't I don't know depress. If it, I don't does know it? if this is attached. But I, I mean, it also could just be you know sometimes you get them at the end and they're purely decorative, and mm. the actual things hidden underneath. So it might just be a purely decorative at the end of something. 
That's good. That's an unusual object, though, isn't it? It's beautiful. And it's got, like, decorations. It's got, like, scored lines. It looks almost like Star Trek. -y. It really does look <laughs> like Star Trek. <laughs> but if anyone recognises what this is, we'd love to know. And, and just another beautiful little metal thing. Yeah. So Mum found this, which is not toothpaste. This, again, has quite a lot of history. It's got beautiful... Are they like Prince of Wales feathers on the top? I can't even see with my glasses on. Magnifying glass? I have a magnifying glass. So this lid has the names Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman on it. And that would be Hugh Bower, Charles Osborne and Edward Cheeseman. But they were perfumers to the Queen in the 1800s. For many years, Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman worked for Robert Hendry who for 50 years until his death in 1862 carried on the business of manufacturing perfumer at Tichborne Street. On his death, Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman made a bid for the business which was not accepted. In February 1863, Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman commenced business as perfumers at 19 Golden Square and began to use the name Robert Hendry on the shopfront labels and wrappers. They were taken to court by the purchasers of the Hendry businesses in December 1864 and they agreed to alter their labels. Hugh Bower um, married Charles Osborne's daughter in 1858 and was listed in the 1881 census as being a perfumer with employees. On the 8th of October 1873, Osborne of Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman died suddenly at 19 Golden Square, their business. Hugh himself died in 1886, which would be when the partnership dissolved. But the, the partnership dissolved, but the business continued using the same name because in 1910 they were still advertising as Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman, 19 Golden Street, Regent Street, London. Which is probably when our lid is from, because that would fit with the other stuff we find if it was 1910, around that time. So yeah, they made all sorts of sort of like toiletries and perfumes. Our lid could be from a Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman's glycerin and honey jelly for chaps and roughness of skin. So if you look at the lid there on that poster, it looks like it could be decorated like ours. It could have been a Osborne, Bower and Cheeseman's Sambuline, an elegant and harmless preparation for improving the skin, free from grease or stickiness. We've got some seals. So this one says RB. It's almost impossible to... I can't find anything about that. Mm -hmm. it is, I'm sure there's a number of companies. Or it's actually RP, so that would probably... Oh no! It's RB. And this one on one size says M.B.C and on the other side says Either W O O or O O M. And a plain one. And then we found loads of general post office post bag seals. And these are the only three that we can very clearly see well, sort of clearly see what they where they were going or where they were coming from. We don't know which one it is, do we? No. So this one says London and then a postcode. But this one, which has been had some damage, says Greenwich. So we will definitely have to think of something to do with these because we have loads now and they're such beautiful colours. So we'll have to think what to do with those. So that's sort of it. We found lots of good metal things for crafting. I think um, this is of a which... harness rather than a belt. I just want to oh, add yes. that. It would be a very big belt. <laughs> yes, it would be a massive belt. But nurse's belts, but I, I don't think it's fancy enough for that. almost looks like the bit on a seat belt because of this bit. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's odd. But, um, yeah, we found a handful of really amazing things and lots of good things for crafting. As you see, we've already put some of those to use. So, yeah, that was our metal trip. We have been finding bottles that fit all of our pretty stoppers. So, I hope you enjoyed. 
Um, I hope you liked our little craft. Um, thank you everyone for liking, commenting and subscribing. All of our wonderful donors, our wonderful Patreons. Um, we hope you have a good rest of the week and we will see you next Sunday. Bye! Bye. Okay, we've bought a magnet and the request of people. You can see how this is going to go. But for a start, I can see another post office seal. I'm going to take them all home and see if I can find names on them. Right. Let's get the magnet out. What's that? Like a folded piece of something. That's quite nice. Right. Let's go. Mm-hmm.